thanks everybody for joining us again. My name is Scott Jansen. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, GCI. Uh, GCI, uh, behind me you can see one of their products, but they have a lot of different products uh, that will, are super beneficial across uh, many different industries from material handling to uh, torque reaction. Uh, so GCI, they were founded in 1982 and, and simply put, they were, they were created to create more efficient and safer work environments. Um, their main product line is uh, torque arms like you see here. This is uh, an example of a 375 Newton meter torque arm. Uh, but they, uh, they have torque arms that range from uh, 100 Newton meters is their minimum size, and they go all the way up to 7,500 Newton meters. Uh, those are some of the largest in the industry. I don't think actually that anybody else has those. Uh, the second uh, main uh, product line of theirs is what we call manipulators, whether it's a below the hook manipulator, whether it's an articulate arm uh, a manipulator, uh, or even their stackers. So for their manipulators, a standard articulate arm similar to this set up here, uh, up to a thousand pounds of capacity, uh, but they also have uh, stackers. Uh, it's a proprietary product to them that um, can go up to 10,000 pounds of, uh, of manipulating capacity. So if you have any, uh, uh, any questions about any of the products you see today, uh, a couple things for you. Uh, one, if you could put those questions in the chat. Uh, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a button that says chat, click on that, type to everyone. Uh, the question that you have, and we'll address those questions at the uh, at the end of it. Uh, secondly, um, when Joel Johnson, Joel Johnson from GCI uh, joins uh, this, he's going to do the presentation of some actual products. Um, you're going to want to. Uh, we're going to. Uh, um, he wants to show his screen and he wants to show his video at the same time. So what I want you to do is once we're going to spotlight his video and he's going to show his screen. But if you could drag. Uh, the bar between the video and the um, and the uh, screen share about halfway through your screen. You'll be able to see the video and his screen at the same time, which makes for a much better de demonstration. Uh, and lastly, uh, like the flyer stated, we have a, um, a, a giveaway here. We have a, a nice Milwaukee corded, a cordless tool set uh, with a driver and an and a impact. Uh, we'll announce the winner at the end of that. Uh, so with that, uh, first off, we're going to start with a quick and brief uh, presentation, uh, kind of a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, just go real quickly through all the different product lines because we're not going to show everything today. It's just impossible to do. Uh, Joel's going to go through uh, the smart arm technology here, which what you see is, is Adaptix. It's a bolt sequencing um, software that is proprietary to GCI. And then he's going to go through some of their carbon fiber arms, which are uh, second to none in the industry. I can tell you from my own experience, I bought one of the very first uh, models when I was an engineer. Uh, we had been using GCI product prior to that. They were all steel. They came out with the carbon fiber arm and it made uh, a world of difference uh, in the operator's minds as far as e ease of use and, and ergonomics. So um, I'm going to step off the screen here. Steve is going to share this quick presentation and I'm going to dictate. And then we're going to hand it over to Joel. All right, so this is, like I said, a very brief overview of the, uh, of the GCI product. So um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here because we wanna get to the live demonstration. Uh, so first, oh, there we go. All right, end of hook tool. Uh, like I stated a little bit before, they'll do end of hooks. Uh, here you can see a snowblower housing and a large tire, large to small, uh, they got it all. All right, uh, like I said, manipulator arms, uh, lifting capacities up to a thousand pounds. You can see the carbon fiber one on the left. There's a steel one on the right. Uh, lots of different products that they can handle. Uh, lift cylinders, if you wanna mount from a, a overhead rail, the lift cylinder is, is a great option for you. Stackers, I talked about this is, uh, GCI is the only one in the industry that can do this. Uh, you can see on the left, there's Tiffany uh, lifting up a very large capacity, uh, very large uh, casting there with their stacker arm. Uh, great product for for large uh, large material handling applications. Uh, reaction fixtures, whether it's a multi spindle like you see on the left, a trombone tool on the right, 
uh, and many more. Uh, tabletop arms for smaller reaction arms, um, we can do that as well. Uh, torque tubes, you can see here. Uh, all the, uh, these are a couple multi spindle applications, but you certainly could do a single spindle, uh, e even more than two spindles than you see here. Uh, torque carts, any of these, uh, uh, pro well, not any of them, but many of the products could be mounted to a mobile cart if you needed to, if you want to be, uh, uh, be able to move it around your facility. Oh, ah, geez. Sorry, guys. Get back to where we were. Uh, and oh. Uh, high capacity torques, you can see here are two uh, carbon fiber arms. Joel's gonna show us a few of those today when he's up at our facility. And finally, we're gonna, we're gonna end with the, the smart arms. So we, we talked briefly about that. You saw that uh, smart arms are the, um, uh, the Adaptex program that they have as a proprietary software, great for sequencing bolts uh, and many other things. So with that, I'm going to turn the, uh, turn the camera back over, or over to Joel and like I said, if we're going to showcase his video and he's going to share his screen at the same time. But if you could drag that, uh, that bar in the middle um, so that it's centered on your screen, it'll be uh, uh, help with a much better presentation. So uh, Joel, are you, are you there? Uh, Joel, are you... Joel, you're hey guys. Going to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Hey, guys. How's it going? Can't see you. Hopefully, you got the camera there. There. Now you're good. How y'all? How y'all doing? So, I appreciate you guys giving me a few minutes here to talk today. The products that I have set up, I'm a guest in our, in our shop today, so there's guys working behind me. Uh, Ryan Tweet, one of our design engineers, came to help us work today and then help me run the tooling and kind of show some of the ideas that we're working on. I got a couple cool projects that I want to show you right here in our, in our demo room uh, in, in the back corner uh, before we go over, and then we're going to do a plant tour on the, on the shop floor and show you guys some of the big stuff that GCI gets to build. The project today that I'm going to start with that I really like to show off whenever possible is our carbon fiber demo arm. This particular arm is, I've traveled the country with it, and we've actually taken it now to over 140 different customer locations to let you guys see it in person. Now, with COVID being a problem in the last couple of years, you know, last year or so, we've had to come up with some creative ways to kind of show you guys how this works and what we're doing. So I want to show you guys how this arm, how this arm works. This demo that we set up, we make it lower, and you'll see the shop, the arms in the shop behind us are a whole lot taller. But we make this one lower so we can put it in a trailer and take it in and out and still let you guys feel it and understand the ergonomics to it. What I like about this arm is it can be used either as a torque arm or a material handling manipulator. I currently have it set with the manipulator end effector, but I just leave the torque arm mounted to it because different customers want to see different things. Uh, so we'll take the torque arm down and we can slide it on and off and, and, uh, and show different conversations in person when you guys are, are ready and we can get back to, to seeing you guys at your facilities. This particular arm, and I'll stretch it out here a little bit, is 12 feet long. It's a torque reaction arm. This arm can react 1,500 newton meters of torque. At 1,500 newton meters of torque, we can make this arm as long as 20 feet, and it's still really ergonomically advantageous when you get longer than 10 feet. The shorter arm, the shorter the arm is, the less advantage the carbon fiber gives us. But uh, but uh, I'll show you here. I'm going to work on that today. So at 12 feet in reach, this arm can articulate at the shoulder joint at the main rotation, 359 degrees. It can articulate at the elbow about 270 degrees, giving me a coverage radius, an effective coverage radius of about 22 feet, because I never want the arm completely straight. We always want the elbow bent a little bit. So this arm at 12 feet in length has a carbon fiber tube here, 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 and here. At 12 feet in length, this arm is about 300, 340 pounds lighter than the same arm would be if we had made it out of steel. If it was 20 feet long, it'd be, it'd be a couple hundred pounds lighter than that. So, um, I, 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 you know, the savings on it because the carbon fiber, the longer it gets, the more value the carbon fiber offers. In addition to having really good construction with the carbon fiber, removing a lot of mass to control the, the inertia on it, 
DCI arms all have leveling joints on their, on their multiple ends. So we can level the main rotation by adjusting jam screws that are between the bolts that mount the main rotation to the, uh, to the pedestal so that the main rotation isn't drifting and flying and flopping away into people's way. There's a second flange on the top. This flange levels the power arm, the forward section of the arm with the vertical travel. So that arm's not drifting and, and walking off when we, go to use to it, when we go to use it. So this particular arm, when we set it up as the demo, because I have the, uh, I have the DC tool mounted on it, it's a little bit goofy that I got my brakes hidden up here. But because I have the DC tool on it, the DC tool and the encoder packages add about 50 pounds of weight to the product. So you can see that I can move it pretty comfortably with just my fingertips as I bring it in. I'm going to go over and also pick up another 50 pound weight to simulate what the system would move like if we had a 100 pound part that we were picking up and articulating and moving throughout your facility. These manipulators can be made either floor mounted like I'm showing you here or ceiling mounted up overhead. So when I pick up the part, I have two regulators on here. I can hit a load button, which offsets the additional 50 pounds that I just picked up. We put into this system what we call precision control valves. So we've got, we've got variable speed buttons. For this demonstration, we like to show that we can tilt the part and we have infinite control as to where we want to stop it. We can run it quickly or slowly as we pick it up and bring it in. Because I'm in float mode, I can still raise it up or down and be able to precisely present it as I, as I walk into any position. And again, you guys will see me operating it with my fingertips as we come in, even though it's got 100 pounds of mass on it. When I go to set it down, the OSHA standard on this, on this particular type of system requires two buttons to release it. We can add load cells, we can do limit switches, things like that. We can add additional things if, if you guys want, but the basic minimum for this conversation is a safety button and a no part. When I go to safety and no part, I automatically go back to the single regulator and I'm back floating without that extra 50 pounds of weight on it with the same effort that I bring into it. This particular arm, like I said, can either be a manipulator or it can be a smart arm. And I'm going to take time and show you guys the demonstration on the smart arm from the, uh, from the other station as we come over. But, uh, but you'll see that this one is configured. This one has five encoders buried in it. So we're tracking the tooltip position when we're running it with the DC tool on the quick change. We're tracking the tooltip position within about a quarter of an inch. Okay. So I want to share a quick, well, before I do that, just to show you guys what we're going to work on, I want to show you guys a sequential process now in our software that we call Adaptix. I'll make sure the camera can show the, the parts that we're looking at here. I have two different systems set up on the table. I have my little 100 Newton meter, which goes down to inch ounces, carbon fiber uh, articulating arm. It's 30 inches long. It's easy to use and, and bring in and control. We're also running what is really unique to the industry, a fully encoded torque tube on a gantry. I have X, Y, Z, uh, control, again, tracking the tooltip position on this accurately down to about an inch today. Um, so we're pretty proud of that. It's a very long torque tube. It's on, a, it's on a gantry, but I have encoders on the bridges, on the trolleys, on the main rotation for the, for the tool articulation, for the tool rotation, and on the height of the tool. So I know where that tooltip, again, is at within about an inch. So we're going to do a quick share in the, uh, in the setup here. And I want to show you guys both how the computer guides us through a process, as well as letting you guys see on the, uh, on the computer as we come through on the side. So as you guys come in, I'm hoping you can see the camera as, as well as what we're going in to run. The first thing I set up in this process is it wants me to scan my operator badge. I'm sorry, scan my serial number. So I'm going to put in my serial number, and I'm going to say that it's 121212. Then it's going to scan my operator badge, and then I'm going to say it's Joel and Ryan. Joel, one second. Oh. Uh, you're going to have to uh, click start video, I believe. I can do that. Uh, da, da, da. Hey, guys, I'm sorry. be in the lower left yep lower left right next to the audio the see i went into the uh it's always fun to watch joel is that coming in nope uh you gotta click start video 
There we go. There we go. Okay. Hey guys, sorry about that. Every day is a school day, even though we've been open doing this for a year. So what I wanted to show you here, guys, again, is, is we're going to scan my operator badge now. I'm using my keyboard on this as my, as my barcode scanner. And I'm using my laptop as my industrial PC that's powering the sequential operation for Adaptix. Uh, so we'll put in our badge number. And we'll hit OK. Now it wants me to teach where my part is at. And what I want to show on that, you guys, is maybe my part doesn't always land in the same position. So I'm just going to take it and set it down somewhere at a different angle, well out of the tolerance that I taught it to. I'm going to take the tool and physically put it on bolt number two. And I'm going to hit, in this case, I'm going to hit the enable button because I'm using a couple of different devices. Uh, it could be the tool trigger. It could be my keyboard. I need an input to show it uh, where the board's at. I'm going to put it on bolt number one and teach it where number one is at. And in doing that, I've taught the adaptic system the orientation of this part, even though I just plopped it down on the table. So now I can go through and torque. For this particular part of the demonstration, my little arm has a module on it that the encoder's plugged into, and we've added some I.O. to give an OK or a not OK signal, simulating that it's a DC tool. On the other system, we have the DC tool set up, and you'll see that in a second. What I like to show is that we can control multiple devices. It could be vision system cameras. It could be um, pin stampers. It could be a lot of different things. If it has digital communication, it could be sequential operation. We can create a process within Adaptix to guide the operator through it. So if the operator's on the right fastener, I'm going to hit OK, and if we get an OK from the tool, it's going to force me onto bolt number two. And if I get an OK on bolt number two, it's going to force me onto number three. If I go out of order, number five is blinking. It knows that I'm on the wrong bolt, but it will not allow me to accept that rundown. If I get it on the right bolt, those crosshairs is the adaptive software and the encoders sending the enable signal to the DC tool. If I get a not okay, the operator slips off or we strip a bolt or something else, I can do that and I can continue to run until they either abort the process or we get an okay signal. So once we get our okay on bolt number four, we'll go on to number five. I'm sorry, on number four, we'll go on to number five and I'll send a not okay because it'll look cool in our data later. We're collecting all of this core data as we do the rundowns and I can show you guys that at the end of the conversation if we have time. So we're populating a simple CSV folder for the sequential build and we're tracking the part numbers and the VIN numbers and the barcode scans. So this process is done. I've done my sub-assembly build. I've made my plate that I wanted to run. Now that I'm done with my plate, we want to install that plate on the discrete brake. This discrete brake is one of the torque reaction brakes that GCI makes. Now I'm just going to move it well out of the position that we had. Um, and I'm going to ask Ryan to help me on this one. So Ryan's going to come over, and I'm going to be the okay, not okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give him the, uh, the signal. i got to teach the bolt positions where it's at. So he's going to put the tool on bolt number two, and I'm going to teach it. He's going to move it over to bolt number one, the first rundown that he's going to do. And again, now we've taught the whole encoded gantry where bolt number one is at. Now he can run the tool trigger, and you can see that we're going to get an okay torque. And if he gets an okay on number one, I'll step out of the way here. He forces him onto number two. And if he gets on number two, it's going to force him onto number three. And if he gets an okay on number three, we're going to four. And what I like to show about this last bolt, if he slips off, if he comes out of zone while he's running there, Adaptix is going to kill that rundown. He's not going to be able to run. He has to be in the right position. So once he sees those crosshairs, he gets the enable signal for the tool. The last two bolts, the reason I put these together, guys, is that they're only two inches apart. So you can see even though that we're on a fully encoded gantry, it knows if he's on bolt number one or bolt number two, and he gets his okay again on, on that bolt. That process is done, and we're going to sleep and, uh, and moving on from there. So what I want to do... Before we, go too, before we go too much farther, I want to give you guys a quick tour of the GCI shop and what we're doing here. Can you uh, stop your share as well? Yes. So we're done with the Dapix. We should be back on the camera there. And I'm going to do the talk, but we're going to put the camera around here a little bit, guys.
this is a really unique application, a unique year for us. In this year, we have uh, we typically build about 500 systems like I'm going to show you today. We'll start right here, Ryan. We typically build about 500 systems like this every year. Uh, today is a pretty unique week. We have a large project coming through for a company that builds big yellow equipment. Hey, uh, Ryan. Do you um, want to yeah, you can that, unplug that. That computer a little bit. That screen is uh, in the way. I'm sorry. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, guys. That wide-angle camera picks up stuff pretty pretty quick. Thank you, guys. This particular arm that I'm going to show you guys is a torque reaction arm that's designed to lift 35, I'm sorry, 3,000 newton meters of torque. Again, it's carbon fiber instead of steel. This particular arm, if I remember correctly, is 14 feet long. Uh, what's really kind of one of the unique att attributes about this arm, like my demo system, is we're building the system with a quick change tool end effector that you guys can see right here. So in the quick change tool end effector, we can add one tool and remove it because they have a couple different size tools that they needed to run, but they didn't want to duplicate the, the arms in those stations. And again, it's carbon composite instead of steel, so it's big, but, uh, but it moves really nicely. I'm going to slide this system out of the way, and I'm going to go show the group some of the biggest tools that there are in the world. This particular arm that we're looking at here Guys, is a 3,500 newton meter arm again? Uh oh. <laughs> they don't have it all hooked up yet. And Joel unlocked the wrong brake. Chris is laughing at me. So, the 3,500 newton meter arm, this particular system, if you guys can see that for some scale here, is 15 feet in reach. And again, I can use it in dual articulations, and I can move it literally with my fingertips as we, as we go through. Uh, so, this is going to have a very big tool on it, um, and we're, we're pretty proud of that as we can walk with it. I'll lock the brakes on this again. Put that out of the way. The last one that I want to show you guys is over here in the corner. And they're working on it on the side over here. This particular arm is one of the largest torque arms in the world. Uh, this arm is an F7500, and it's capable of reacting 7,500 Newton meters of torque. Uh, so as Chris is up there building it and putting the cylinders together, uh, it's 21 feet in reach giving me an effective radius, again, of about 40 feet uh, that we can reach in just about any direction that we want to be able to get on some really large pieces of equipment. Again, the advantage of these long reach arms is that we can use these arms to usually run single tools on both sides of a piece of large equipment. You don't have to buy two systems and, and uh, two sets of tooling. They're tool neutral. So you guys can buy Clico, you can buy DeSuter, you can buy Aimco through the guys at Rhino. If you have another brand already in your facility and, and you want the Rhino team to, uh, to help put a different tool on that, we can set it up with just about anything you guys want to run. So quick tour of our shop and kind of some of the things we're putting together here in the assembly portion of our, uh, of our facility. I want to open up back and send it back to Scott and the team to see if there's any questions that we have. All right. Well, thanks, Joel. That was uh, that was great seeing the shop, seeing the uh, Adaptix uh, software, uh, seeing your demo. Uh, if anybody is interested in learning more about these products, uh, by certainly contact your your local Rhino Toolhouse representative. Uh, we have a, a you can see we do have an Adaptix demo right here in New Berlin. So anybody in the in the Wisconsin area, we can certainly get you on site if you if you'd like to see that. Or uh, I know. Uh, Joel uh, does uh, road trips every year with the, with the arm that you saw at the beginning of the video, uh, but we also are always available for uh, you know a, a personalized live demo if there's something very specific that you'd like to see. So with that, uh, I'm going to have Steve read me questions um, in the chat, and we'll, we'll start answering those, and then we'll uh, get you out of here. Do we have a chair? Yeah, just read them off to me, Steve. What's that? Uh, I got a question here. Uh, have you ever made smart manipulators? Joel, that, uh, Joel are you uh, unmuted? Uh, if you could answer that question. I'm not positive on that one. Joel? I we'll... might have to unmute him. Give me a second. Sure. Hey, guys. 
Right. Joel, can you answer the question about uh, have you ever made a smart manipulator? Yeah. We, we, we have. So we had a, an application here recently for a customer down in Florida that had a part that they could pick the part up at different angles. And if they put the part on the assembly that they were joining it to at the wrong angle, they, uh, they wouldn't know it until they got into test after they put a lot of other content into it. So we actually used a GCI manipulator, similar to the one that we're showing you here, to come in and grab the big housing. And then they could track the, from where we picked it up in a known position, they could track the degrees and know that the manipulator was actually locked on at the, at the zero, the 45, or the 90 degrees that it required for that assembly to work correctly for that specific model. There was no way other than pictures for the operator to see it. So if they placed the Adaptix manipulator on the part and used it to place the part correctly, they could use that then to enable the downline DC tools that join those parts together. And it was kind of using the same technology and just a, a different concept. Worked really neat. Great. We've, we've also integrated manipulators with, uh, with torque arms, uh, the opposite to help drag the torque arm through the application. And we can talk more about that later. Uh, one uh, specific question we have here um, from Mark. Uh, they have a, an application that they, they were wondering if this would work for. They, they basically have an 18 inch by 48 inch uh, flat wire shelf and uh, a nine by 48, 48 inch flat wire shelf. Um, they pick each one of those up uh, and they have to flip each one of them over uh, when they stack them. Um, we load them in and out of a robot uh, weld fixture and uh, they can get very heavy. Um, is this something that would help with something like that? Uh, so, so Mark, was it? Go ahead. Mark. Yes, certainly Mark. Um, appreciate the question. Uh, it sounds to me like it, you know, a GCI manipulator could certainly help with that application. Uh, I would recommend that uh, one of our local sales engineers, uh, you reach out to them and uh, We'll, we'll get our eyes on the actual application, get some pictures, we'll measure, take all the measurements we need, uh, and then make a recommendation. But I certainly think that it, uh, just from the initial description, that we could certainly help. I, I don't want to guarantee it without actually seeing it, though. Thanks, Scott. Uh, what is the, uh, actually, can you tie in uh, servo hoist into a, a GCI? Joel? Yeah, can, can I take that one? We, we can and we have. Uh, typically, the products that GCI builds, though, are pneumatically controlled. Uh, we've had some applications where specific customers don't want to use hoist for vertical travel, that so we've integrated servos. Uh, we have done some of the, some of the uh, powered rotations, powered end effectors. The, the costing on that versus a robot usually doesn't pan out. We try to be somewhere in between that million and a half dollar robot and, and operators hurting themselves trying to do it by hand as far as the integration and the level of technology that we bring in. Sure. Is that everything? What other thoughts do we have? Okay. Well, I appreciate everybody jumping on today. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be sure to send out an invite for the next, uh, next one. Uh, we, it's an unknown guest at this point in time, but we will uh, be sure to get you uh, another one for March. Uh, in the meantime, uh, or now we want to give away our uh, Milwaukee toolkit. Remember, if you, uh, if you guys use Milwaukee in your plant, you can get that product right here from uh, Rhino Toolhouse as well. Um, and great product, and this is uh, just one of their many. So with that, uh, Mark Swab, uh, hopefully I didn't say your name incorrectly, um, but you, uh, you are the winner today. We'll, Steve Vote, you'll get an email from Steve Vote uh, after this meeting to get your shipping information and we'll get this product out to you. So appreciate it again, everybody, and uh, hope to see you next time. Uh, and, Joe, uh, Joey we... did have another question for us, Scott, if possible. Oh, you do, okay. Go ahead. I was trying to read the question. I just saw you asked you had a question if we had time. Sure. Uh, we certainly... Yeah, we certainly do, Joey. What are the... Um, what are your weight capacities on, on your products? So the, the heavier the, the weight of the product that we're picking up, the larger the system that it requires. Uh, the largest system that I've ever personally built was for a 10,000 pound engine uh, that went to GE Energy up in Canada. Uh, that particular system, we had to pick up six different engines 
and uh, and uh, be able to pick them up. 11 feet of vertical travel was required to clear the fences within their machining area on 150 foot runways. And we had powered roll and powered tilt uh, on those applications uh, as well as the powered vertical travel. So we can go really big down to really small. So he's saying we have a 500 pound plus tool that we need to handle. We'd, we'd sure like a chance to let one of the Rhino guys come and see the application. I'm willing to bet we can handle it. I'm working on a multi-spindle right now for the team uh, that we're going to be lifting almost 900 pounds of tooling uh, to bring down on a multi-spindle application. Sure. What other questions does the group have? Uh, do you have a float mode? Absolutely. So the, so the arm, as I was showing you guys here today, and I'll pull the video back up again, is in float mode. We can do both a balanced bias, which you, which you refer to as float mode, or we can do a powered bias, whatever, whatever we need. So the application the other gentleman asked us about earlier, uh, that, that we were incrementing the, the weight of the part as we pick more shelves up, might not work in float mode. But again, on, on this particular system, when I grip the part and I add my 50-pound weight to it, I hit my load button and I am in float mode. I don't have to use any buttons to push it up or down. Uh, again, that can be done with a load cell, that can be done with proc sensors, or it can be done with the button uh, that works really well for our demonstration that we have here today. But again, I can, I can bring it in precisely, drive it in wherever you want to put it to make sure we precision line it up and, uh, and we're ready to go. Does that make sense? All right. Well, with that, we're gonna we're gonna end this meeting again. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to serve you. And again, if you have any applications, be sure to reach out to your Rhino Toolhouse sales representative, and, and we'll be sure to get you uh, uh, get you quotes, get you products for the uh, for the application. So, uh, have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you.